Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back to the 1925 bungalow and a table full of stuff. Now, this is just, well, this is 90% of what I thrifted uh, on the day, the day that I spent with uh, Jeffrey, who was visiting this area. Uh, we went to local thrift shops in southern New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania. This is what I brought home. Most of it. And I think there's actually some more still out in the car. But let's review. And I'm going to come over here and do it from this angle today because there's a little bit, there's a little more uh, sunlight coming in uh, in this direction. Okay. Um, well, first of all, ah, no surprise there. You know how I love old Pyrex. 19, 20s and 30s Pyrex. There you have it. There's another one. Typical handle on the lid. That yellowish tint. You know it. And it was etched. That's the way they did it in the 30s. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, that's what that is. Um, that, dates, that dates to uh, between, oh, 1925 to 1935. It's a nice, nice one. Small. I might have to keep that one. Look at Cambridge. Ugh! Didn't look the pattern up. I think it might, anyway, it doesn't matter because I can't, I can't remember. I know I've seen it. It's a very popular Cambridge pattern. I just don't have it memorized. Um, these little things always remind, remind me of pumpkins. Um, that is a nice, what would you do with that? Put rolls in it? You could, you could. It's in their beautiful blue color and with gold decorations. Mm -hmm. So, hey, this is all fresh. Haven't had a chance to look anything up yet, but that's, uh, that's Cambridge all right. See the handle and the gold decoration? Yeah, I just can't remember the name of the pattern. Back here is watermelon glass, watermelon. You know, while I was filming it, a nice girl came up and she, she saw me filming and she whispered, I think that's uranium. And I said, yes, dear, it's definitely got uranium in it. <laughs> she was cute. But uh, now let me tell you about these pieces. Of course, you know, it was never called watermelon glass. That's what collectors call it for obvious reasons, pink and green. It was popular to do this in the early 30s, mid early to mid 30s. Several glass companies did. Every single one of these pieces has a flea bite. Okay, hold on. Scott, a week ago, there was a beautiful piece that was chipped and you didn't buy it. What are you now doing buying pieces that are chipped? Well, let me explain. That single piece that I saw a week ago, that had a big chip in it. Even if you were to have that chip professionally filed down, ground down. It was so big, you would still know and be able to see that that piece had been chipped. I'm not interested in that. These pieces, the flea bites are so small that if a person wanted to, they could take them to a glass repair. There are people that do it. Um, and they could grind they could have the little flea bite ground out and you could still use these without actually seeing that they had been ground, without actually uh, being aware that they had been repaired. Okay, that's the difference. Now that's just me. That's just my pickiness when it comes to what I buy and don't buy. So put them in your display cabinet, put your black light on them. Some people just want them for that purpose. But other people want to use them. And maybe you don't mind the flea bites. Maybe you want to have uh, the flea bites polished out. Okay, so I wanted to just let you know. This one has floral etching on it. See there? That one doesn't. So these taller ones have a little floral etch. Okay. 
Um, salt and pepper shaker. I love it. It's Art Deco. Are these Harker? Uh, they might be. I don't remember. I don't think they're marked on the bottom. Um, I've had these before. They did various decorations to these. Very Art Deco. They look like skyscrapers. On the back side, you could have put whatever label on there that you wanted. Right? These happen to actually be marked salt and pepper. And they were souvenirs from where? Niagara Falls. How about that? Now everybody's going to say, oh, give them to D." Well, D doesn't just collect anything Niagara Falls. And I understand that because I don't collect anything Jersey or Philly. So it might not be something that she's interested in. But if D, if you are interested in these, girl, they're yours. I won't charge you much. Ha! Uh, look at that beautiful blue teapot. I love it. Let me stand up here. I think this might have just a little flea bite right there. It doesn't bother me. This came in different colors, too. And it's called Oxford Stoneware, made in the USA. Nice. Beautiful pop of color. 30s, 40s. Yep. Now let me back up again. Okay, we did the Pyrex. We didn't do this piece of Deco Chrome. What a fantastic find with its lid. And the lid comes off and doubles as a serving bowl. We'll take the lid off and you can see, ooh, grilled uh, Brussels sprouts on one side, green bean almondine on the other. Butterscotch Bakelite handles, so 1930s. When we turn it over, we expect to see, and we do see, Chrome Craft. I'm gonna zoom in on it for you. There's the old Farber Brothers in Brooklyn. Oh, come on now. You're being a poopy head this morning. There we go, Chrome Craft, Farber Brothers. It might just say New York under there, I can't see. Okay, so, wow, to be able to find, and I've cleaned it, this was a hot mess when I got it. You can then turn this upside down and put it on your table as a serving dish. But that's going to keep your uh, vegetables warm while we're waiting for Uncle Henry to come to the dinner table. I bought a collection of flower frogs. Um, this one is different from the others and it has a larger hole in the center. Could even put a candle in that. Uh, so we have all of those, get back in focus. There you are. Okay, now, that thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I know what you're going to say. Ha 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 ha. But let's bring it forward. Hold on for a second here. I'm gonna to have to move all of these pieces. Uh, we're going to bring it forward because we're going to chew the fat over it for a minute, as they say. All right, get up here. Put it down right there. Okay, what is it? Some of you said, oh, I don't know. Some of you said a candle stand. Some of you said a pedestal. Some of you said, who? It's a candlestick and somebody glued something on top? No. But a whole bunch of you said, oh, I know what that is. That's a glass shelf support. Aha, yes. Glass shelf supports were made and used in all types of stores, drug stores and... Uh, for uh, apothecary, well, for uh, drugstores and uh, what am I trying to say? Really any type of commercial use. And uh, 
glass shelves. You know, you'd have two of these. Let's put some pictures in so you can see, and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. While I was looking in this, looking at this in the store, I said, wait a minute. This does not look like the typical glass shelf support that I've seen before. What's different about it? What's different from the ones, you know, not just the shape of it here. That's no big deal. But what really was different uh, and unusual to me is this is slightly concave. There's a little bit of a dip in here. So this is not completely flat. All of the glass shelf supports I've ever seen have been completely flat because a sheet of glass sits on here. And I've never seen one with a with a slight, with a shallow, almost, you know, concave dip to it. And I don't know how well it shows up on this camera, but it's definitely there. Now, the other thing that was unusual was the shape of the top, this elongated oval. So I got to looking at it and I said, you know what? I don't necessarily think that this was intended to be used as a glass shelf support. I think it was used in a store to display a hat or a wig or a wig or a hat or something like that. And then I went online and I did a little bit of studying and a little bit of research. I believe this to be a millinery stand. Yes, okay, millinery, you know, women's hats and things. Because of this concaved top, is that the word I'm looking for, concave, this little shallow dip in the top? And the smooth ovalness of this uh, support here as well. You know what? I wasn't planning on doing this, but since it's over here, I know it looks like I set this prop up on pur purpose and I really didn't. Um, the idea is that on a displaced, on a uh, stand in a store, yeah, there's the gentleman's hat or the lady's wig or the lady's hat or whatever could go on there just like that. So unless you have proof otherwise, I'm going to say that I think now notice I didn't say it definitely is. I didn't say, well, I know what that is. I said, I think I think right. That leaves room for the fact that I may be wrong. If you think I'm wrong and you think it is a glass support and not a millinery stand, um, I would love it to know that. And if you've got any documentation or references, I'd like to see that as well. So in the meantime, I'm going to call it a glass millinery stand. And I like it. I like that too. I've never had that little milk glass wine or champagne or whatever you want to drink out of it mimosa we're going to save that until the snow and ice sale uh next january i certainly don't have to tell anybody that that is anchor hawking philby and it is wonderful that it has its lid and there it is in the sapphire blue and we're very well familiar with that particular pattern, which was popular for several years and um, did well, <clears throat> excuse me, for an anchor hawking. Look what's behind that the anchor hawking piece. <laughs> Four beautiful painted tumblers. There were probably six or eight with a matching pitcher, and those are old. Who made them? Not sure yet. Ice water, lemonade set, you know, something like that. But these are antique. And these are going to go all the way back to the very early, you know, the teens and the early 20s, 1915 to 1925, something like that. Those are absolutely beautiful. There are only about two or three patterns of Pyrex that I'll buy, and that's one of them. I saw these from a distance, and I was racing in that direction, and Jeffrey put his hands on them first, and he doesn't 
resell and he's not into butter print. So uh, he said, here, I don't want them. I said, yeah, I'll sell them. So we have two, I guess they're still doing okay. They are different sizes. The one on the bottom is a little bit larger and there's actually an extra lid there. So um, there's another Royal Ruby Red. We'll save that for Christmas time, Anchor Hawking. And I'm always keeping in mind my single folk or retired folk or folks that have downsized. Maybe it's just you at home or you and one other person. You don't need a place setting of eight and 12, but you'd like some nice things. So we have a place setting for two. This is dinner for two. You'll have a dinner plate, a luncheon salad slash dessert plate, and a cup and saucer. You're gonna recognize, gee, look at that handle and something about that just looks English. If that's what you said, you were right. It's English, all right. And it's English Ironstone. Doesn't tell us who made it, just says English, England, Ironstone. Um, and they're very nice. So these are really good. Sorry for the clanking. That was a little loud there. I can be heavy handed sometimes. Um, so very nice. Pretty. You like it? So we'll sell that to someone as a set of two. And then uh, a little game here, which I've never seen before. And it hasn't been opened. It's all, I mean, in other words, no one has played it. These cards are still all sealed up. See there? I haven't read the directions yet. I like the old fashioned looking, sort of deco looking tin. It says Radio Star. The 1950s through the 90s. I wish it was the 1920s through the 90s, but oh well. So just a little game to play. I think you have to name lyrics or sing songs or do little things. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll play it one night on the air. How about we do that? Uh, does anyone have it? Have you ever played it? It looks like it might be something fun that my family would like to play as well when we get together. And then I picked up three books. Uh, the uh, Cabinet Makers of America, Their Lives and Their Works. And this one looks like it's probably something from the 50s or the 60s. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a... Uh, 1955, 56, 57. There's my Roman numerals there. 1957. I'll enjoy looking through that and reading that. And this must be one of the first books that the Covells ever made because look how young they are. Anybody my age, you remember the Covells. Oh, gosh. She's still... Flopping around there, doing her thing in her 90s. As far as I know, I subscribed to her newsletter. Uh, Ralph has passed away. Look how young they are. Mm. The kindest, nicest people. And so, so not. They weren't pretentious. They were down to earth. I always say that. Anyway, well, I guess I could see, all right, silver and pewter. I don't do a whole lot with silver and pewter, but it's good to have references. What year did they do this? 1961, yeah, 1961. So these two books are mine, part of my reference materials. This I will sell. The Singer Home Decorations Sewing Book. This ought to be a kick for my mid-century folk. I haven't looked at it yet, and it is dated, oh boy, is it dated, let's, let's get, let's get the year, this will be fun to go through, this is 1961, okay, 1961, so if you had, had a, oh gosh, mm. so you're going to learn how to 
get that old Singer sewing machine out and decorate 1961 style. This will be a trip just to look through and look at all these 1960s era rooms. A lot of this is, uh, as you can see, we have rooms in color. Oh my word. I love it. Okay, so I'm actually going to be selling that. We'll put these back the way they were, and I will back up again. Okay, so that was the trip all around, all around to the thrift stores uh, the other day with Jeffrey. And as you know, some of it I'll keep, some of it I'll sell. And as usual, I have to ask you, what was your favorite item? What do you re do? You remember any of these things, or did you just enjoy uh, looking at them? Okay, that's it. Have a happy day. Until the next time, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat, and so long for now. Ooh, how how nice does my lusterware look back there? You like it? All right, let's go. Meow.